Hi everyone, today we're going to look at control statements, so if and for each in the case of CMake. Now if you've worked with CMake a lot, you'll know that there's a couple little things that are special with the if statement, but there's also a lot of power with it. So let's just look through a couple examples. Let's say you have the number 12 and also let's create a variable, just call it word and we'll say string. So if you have an if statement, you can put in here if the number equals 12 and everything that you want to do will happen in between here. It uses end if rather than using curly braces. If you want an else statement, you can do that this way as well and then it will perform the else if this doesn't equal 12. Now let's say you want to work with less than. Less than is actually just less, greater than is just greater. If you want greater than or equal to, you add greater underscore equal and less is basically the same. It's always frustrating when things do not highlight for you, but I guess such is life. Now you might be thinking, what if we just do this equal will this work and the answer to that is no it will not when you work with strings you need to use string equal instead so that's one little caveat that's always a nice thing to know now you are able to include things like not at the beginning here which will negate whatever this is so this would be not equal and the use of ands, the use of ors work. You can also use parentheses to make sure that your ands and ors occur in the proper order. So that's pretty nifty. Now there's also some other things that you are able to work with and one of them is target. Now. Let's, uh, this is a target, by the way. When you do add library or add executable, whatever this name is, in this case it's going to be hello, but whatever this name is, this is a target. So if we didn't want to double compile this, let's say that uh, somewhere in another file maybe it, it automatically already did this for us. If you try to compile it twice, obviously it will not work because the target already exists. But you can do something like this and now since it already exists the not target will eliminate this from running because this target obviously exists right before this if statement exists. So that is very handy and it will save you headaches if you use that. And there's a couple other things you can do. You can utilize things like is underscore directory and you can do cmake source directory here and then we'll do a, the bin folder so if this bin folder exists it is a directory then perform this function that we want or if you don't care if it's a directory or a file, you can just use exists. So that's also going to be handy for you, I would hope. And there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about with if statements, and that is the comparison of files. Sometimes when you're building, you don't know if there's a newer version or an older version of a file. So what you're actually able to do is uh, path to a file and you can include is new or then and path to another file. So if this file is newer than this file, then this will execute. So there's obviously a lot of really handy things here. Now you might be thinking, great, so that's if statements. What about the for each statements? And I glad I'm glad you asked because that's what we're going to actually look at next. So the for each statement is the only type of loop that I know of in CMake 
and that's going to be embarrassing if there's a while and I didn't know about it. I know there's not a four, but there is a four each. So the way that that works is there's a couple different things you can do. One of them is you can do uh, for each, we're going to exclude our number here. And again, you do an end for each. You can put in here number and then put in the word range and you can put in for instance let's just say 10 and what this will do is it will loop through each one of these starting at 0 and go all the way until it hits the number 10 so you can concatenate it and do all sorts of different things where you'll probably end up doing is you'll probably end up utilizing lists more so for instance we can have words and we can have string one and string two and we can actually have um, more words and what you're able to do then is if you want to just have one word this name can be whatever you want you can put in lists and then you can put in words and it will go through each one of these values for you. Nifty and cool is you can also do more words. So it will go through each one of these and then actually it'll go through the same things again because we weren't creative enough. There, now they're different. So now it would go through all six of these items. And obviously you can use this for your um, concatenations and different things like that. So that's all that I really had for you for each and if. They're very handy, very powerful, but there are a few little caveats here and there. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, um, please do like it. Please consider subscribing to the channel and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.